welcome to Trap Lightly, the podcast of two dinosaurs talking about books. It's me, Rex from Germany, and over there is Raptor from Australia. Today we're talking about the book Harley Merlin and the Secret Coven, the first one in the Harley Merlin series by Bella Forrest. Being an empath has its advantages. Harley Merlin can sense people's emotions, among other things. It's how she snagged her first job pinpointing cheaters at a casino. But she has no clue where she got this freakish powers because she spent her childhood jumping from home to home in the foster system and her father left her with nothing but more than a cryptic note. Then she crosses paths with a terrifyingly real monster, which is when a mysterious and annoyingly arrogant young warlock named Wade Crowley steps in, introducing her to a hidden world of beasts, magics, magics, and covens riddled with secrets, as well as clues about her murky past. Whether she likes it or not, this new world is where she belongs, and after a disturbing twist of events, Harley quickly realizes her past is darker than she could ever have imagined, and that someone in the coven is out for her blood. With the help of Wade and her new friend, she must figure out who the traitor is and why they're targeting her before the human and magical worlds dangerously collide. Potter fans, welcome to an exciting world. Uh, look, as a Harry Potter fan myself, I was somewhat, um dissuaded by that fact you can't i'm not i'm not joining your book because you think it will appeal to harry potter people and i'm glad that i didn't read the blurb when i picked this up for the first time um i I gotta say i no i i did read the blurb beforehand but then i had you actually gave me that book at some stage and i read the blurb and then i put it on the shelf and i think it was sitting there for a couple of years (laughs) And then I actually read it and had kind of forgotten what it was technically supposed to be about. I mean, I knew it was about witches because the damn title, but yeah, I can I can't see how people would um, <coughs> would draw some similarities between Harry Potter and this, but I mean, it's magical world. There will always be similarities. Yeah, it's not set at a school. The characters are older, and it's American, so like. Whatever the quintessential parts of this are supposed to be, like, it doesn't really seem to be happening. Like, I mean, we we have we have the main protagonist with no proper family or bad family history who has this something about them that they don't understand, and all of a sudden, yay, they get into this world where they learn to control and use their powers and yeah. It's like friends. 90% of, like, sci-fi stories, so, like... <laughs> mm, bit, yes. Not really sure how you... Yeah, how it's supposed to be Harry I Potter mean, related. It's, it's certainly PG. True. Like, all the fucking way. Yeah, which I don't understand. Like, you have all the characters, you have the opportunity for more complex relationships. Like, let's do it. <laughs> let's let's do that. So, in my in my opinion, this book is written by somebody whose reading level far exceeds far exceeds their ability to write. Like, I am a hundred percent would be in this category if I was writing a story. But like. You are writing for an audience of which you consist, but your writing style is not mature enough to do so. And you kind of, your characters really feel short and you like fall back on tropes a lot. And I just, just a little bit uh, disappointed, you know? Yeah, I don't think they should have hyped it up with the name of Harry Potter because you, you can't no. really reach that high. Or oh, very rarely, let's say, like that. Yeah, it's not, like... Yeah, so this for, this for me is, like, a solid two and a half stars. Like, it's not the worst thing ever written or that I've ever read, clearly. And I went on to read, like, five out of the nine books in this series. Um, <laughs> I'm surprised only two and a half stars, then. 
Look, there are times when I just need something to fill the void in my life, um, and this happens to be one of those things. Okay, well, I actually didn't mind it that much. I mean, yeah, the writing style was sometimes a bit confusing. Overall, the story wasn't bad, like, the structure wasn't terrible. Yeah, and look, it's got like, a solid... It could be a bit more fleshed out, especially the characters. But then if you have another, like, what, nine or ten books in this series, then I suppose you have time to do it later as well. Yeah, I just think that, that a lot happened in the first book. Like... Yeah, definitely. A lot. Uh, like, I can't, I can't really, like, go into it without doing a lot of spoilers, but I think she just tried to tick off too many... She's got a long story arc. I think she tried to tick off too many things without, like, doing enough of the world building behind it. Like, um, the Anita Blake series. That series is also, like, 200 books long. But if you read the first one in the series, it's, it's pretty much a standalone book where, like, all the characters in our relatively small environment are fully fleshed out. By the time you get to book... 400 like you you have detailed backgrounds and detailed backstories for like the hundred characters that end up appearing in the story but the first one only really takes a look at five and and she does a really good job with it i think this just like tried to go too hard too fast hmm. yeah i mean i think i would give it a a good three stars Maybe three and a half. Yeah. Well, this is this is this is a bit backwards, isn't it? <laughs> yes, look at us going strangely in opposite directions, forms. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, this this book, I think. Okay, I am coming back to this book having read it before, and now rather than like being so much caught up in the story, I am looking at looking it to it a little bit deeper and being like, oh well, yeah, so this guy's this is kind of missing, like. I use my imagination to fill in that gap, but she doesn't really do it, so... Yeah. I mean, I don't know, I also haven't read any of the other books. Yeah, you didn't follow on? No, so... I don't know. Maybe it makes a difference as well. Well, let's get into spoilery things, shall we? Spoilers! Uh, yes. Shall we begin with our basically stereotyped bad ass? <laughs> See, our protagonist not needing anyone. Yeah, our protagonist has come from a rough background. She's a bad ass who's learned to take care of herself as she's bounced around this foster system. Um, yeah, and, you know, she wears a slinky mini dress and stilettos in our opening with a really grunge leather jacket, you know, because she's <laughs> sexy and grungy at the same time. Um, actually, we should check out when this book was written, because, like, this has, like, real... I'm gonna say it's early 2000s, looking back in the 90s, being like, I wish I'd been in the grunge scene. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, hold on, I will have a look. Mm -hmm. 2018, actually. 2018? Lord! Okay. I am very surprised. Also, that means that we came across this book. I came across this book pretty much as soon as it came out. And somehow she released nine books before last year. Yeah. I mean, she definitely must have had the story ready in her head to go. Otherwise, like, she just wrote books back to back. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, all, all nine of them? Like, that means, like, she definitely had time to flesh out these characters more. Yeah, holy shit, it's August 2018. That means that... you also must have given it to me, like, right after it came out, pretty much. Yeah, I think it wasn't on your book list or something, or I got it wrong from your book list, and then maybe... Yes, I think that was it. 
Yeah, I got the wrong one off your book list or something, and... Well, it turned out great, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's definitely given me some fodder, but, um... <laughs> uh, yeah, so... We have badass woman in cocktail dress. Woman in cocktail dress who's using her vaguely understood magical empath abilities to uh, find cheaters at the card table, you know, because this is how she makes money in San Diego in a casino. Yeah, I mean, I I do kind of like that we, like in comparison to some other stories where you have protagonist with some kind of secrecy magical powers um, trying to like avoid that at all costs like looking at um, uh, maybe a discovery of riches she's like I don't yeah. want to use my powers I want to do my own thing and I kind of like that here she at least is like well I have the powers use them to make money now <laughs> yeah and I mean she's not even doing it maliciously she's just like I need to make a paycheck to, to, to pay for my lifestyle um, which yeah. is fair enough, like... I mean, as somebody who never really had a proper home or money, I can definitely get that that's on the first goal list. Yeah, and even as somebody who did have a proper home, and it's kind of my goal is to be, like, super independent and eventually own a castle in a place and establish myself a library. But, you know, dreams, yes. right? Well, well, I'll be sitting in the garden just having, like, a bunch of ducks. you got to let go of this ducks thing. I'm not having ducks as a theme. Well, we could have other things at the front of the castle for the theme, but I'm going to have a couple of ducks. Ducks suck. Anyway, this is the review part, not the us talking about our life part. Fine. Anyway, so. she's a badass, basically quintessential. She's doing her thing. And honestly, the book starts out really strong. I like her yeah. character descriptions. It's all really vivid. Like, really vivid. I can 100% imagine the situation that she's in. Like, she's described herself pretty well. I can, I can see myself in this character enough that, like, we're watching the blackjack table as we try... Oh, blackjack? I think it's blackjack. Um, table and the we're working trying to like figure out who's cheating who's like just trying to like make money off the others and like all that kind of jazz um, the depressing people who are addicted yeah those gambling addicts like we like can pretty much really feel it and then we also notice this sparkly gentleman in the corner in that he's not really sparkly, he's just super attractive. Oh no, could this be our male interest? No. Yes, yeah, like hot guy it's in a suit, our basically. Love interest is a well dressed young man, and honestly, he doesn't seem that young in the opening of the book. Like, she's 18, 19, 19 and he's like, yeah. he like seems to his late 20s. I also thought he was, like, at the issue is, the, through, throughout the entire book, I never got a feeling what age he actually is. Like, it kept changing by the sound of it, and till this point, I have no idea how old he's actually supposed to be. Yeah. I, mm, I have no idea either. And maybe she can't make up her mind if she's got a, like, thing for all the gentlemen, but um, she mentions <laughs> that he's younger than one of the characters that comes later, who's only 35 or in in his mid 30s so he's got to be somewhere <laughs> super big yeah um so <sighs> sparkly gentleman in the flashy suit uh is picking up chicks left right and center um as our barmaid is just like getting him shit tons of lime which is something that is never explained later in the book and I know no, he just loves drinking a tiny bit of water with all the limes it's sparkling water with a shit ton of lime it's like tonic and lime it is not a drink a real drink it's a drink that people who are playing you order um <laughs> it looks like an alcoholic beverage it's not 
and he just wants so much lime. Anyway, yeah. Apparently, he also bit... gives one of the bar flies his card. Dum dum dum. Um. Yes. So. Okay. I also, I also liked in the beginning how they showed her her powers off. Like we do have that main um part of her being able to feel other people's emotions. Yeah, it was but, a really good demonstration of that. Yeah, but then we also get like this the tiny snippets of other stuff that she can do, like a bit of telekinesis and, well, mainly that, really. Yeah, we don't really mention the um, other magics until a little bit later in the book. Yeah. But, like, right in the opening, when we're in the midst of this shabang, <laughs> um, we, yeah, we're... We find out who Sorry. the the cheetah at the table is who gets oh, exposed. Oh, the pair of them, and yes. their fake cross table flirting. That's actually real flirting, and they are really into each other. And she's like, they are making me uncomfortable with their outward inward intimacy thing because I can <laughs> feel what they're feeling. Yeah, Bonnie. She's and so or... turned on right now. This is too much. See, and that's the thing. Like, she she clearly has a sense of like what other people's emotions are and you could definitely like really use that to flesh out like an adult story like no not an adult story but like more mature storylines anyway yes it's it's definitely a missed opportunity oh very much so um yeah so she finishes up her shift at like mm, midnight i'm thinking that's what it is like just late Very just late. La late yeah well the other bar the other casino employees have to leave the bar by 12.30 so that gives us a time clincher for the next thing that happens which is she hears the dude screaming in the car park she races over to go and help rolls her ankle what, what are you doing over there are you cleaning the mic yes the camera. why can you see I can it? barely hear you over the rubbing. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought that it was definitely coming from my speakers. Or from my headphones. Well, apparently not. Yeah. Oh, well, that would be one of the reasons why it's so bad. So, at what point did um, I become unhearable? <laughs> now. Like, now. Now? Now it's better. Better. Cool. Um, well, like, what point in our little detail? Um, yes. Well, she is calling it a night, being, like, super happy with herself for doing her job. Making that and money! Yeah. I mean, it's a really good deal. She gets to keep, like, what, half of the money they would have taken yeah, from the casino? Yeah, something like that. Plus yeah. her normal wages, so definitely rolling in dough. Yeah, that's a, that's making bank. Like, can I get that job? Not that I actually have any skills to have that job, but um, that seems like a I lot. Would, I would learn how to count cards for that job. Like, I'd be willing to train for this. It's fine. Um, if you count card, if you're good at counting cards, you could just go and count cards. Like, yeah, but you have to be like exceptionally good at that to not get caught. So, I'd well, much rather you... have the job where I get the payment rather than the risk of getting the jail. The jail. Yes. Let's take the let's take the money and not the jail. Yeah. Well, sure. I'd also like money rather than jail time. But I'm not so to say that I would not be prepared to do jail time for money. Um Yes. Uh, well, yeah. That aside she, <laughs> she she does her job, she gets a paycheck, or oh, she'll know how much she's gonna get out of it much excitement and she's off to go home <coughs> we get an introduction to a nice old car the daisy that's kind of like pretty much the only thing she loves in this world by <laughs> the feeling of yeah. it yeah i mean the only thing she she has like earned and paid money for and set for herself yeah basically 
started. Yes. So we also get a bit of inner monologue that apparently she spent quite a bit of um, quite a bit of a paycheck on getting repairs done on the car and because she drives a Mustang and Mustangs are not a sensible car for anyone. Advice you should take from Princess Diaries. <laughs> I mean, also, she's like, oh, cool, seeing that protagonist, of course she has to go have a fucking last thing. Yeah, she's our protagonist. What else would she drive? I just, I'm just waiting for the day that we get the, the, the super cool and hip female protagonist who drives a Volvo. There's nothing wrong with a Volvo. What? No, but it'd be a difference to all those damn books who try to be... Oh no, she also needs to have a cool car. Look, there is nothing wrong with my Kia Rio. <laughs> no, I, there isn't. You'd be a great friend. I am a badass, and I should have a story written about me. We, we'll do that. It's you and your, your uh, adventures in the car. It'll be great. Yeah, I mean, I don't go very many places at the moment, but... um. <laughs> It's okay, I'll come over, we'll go places. Sweet! It's only gonna take you until, like, September to get here because nobody's flying anymore? <laughs> Basically, if you're not here by Tuesday, flights to Australia are done. Aren't they already? Yeah, so the last commercial flight is, like, on on Tuesday, and then if anything arrives here, you have to go into forced quarantine. Um, oh, I thought they already stopped with the commercial flights. No, they're still selling them. <laughs> you just can't get on them. Yeah, basically. Uh, excellent. Well, we... Uh... <laughs> Deviating from the topic again. Um, uh, hugely so. Yes. So she's out there and all of a sudden I think she hears this this guy in the middle of the road being slightly panicky. Panicky? He's like screaming for his life because he can't. Yeah. Panicky. And uh, clearly being attacked by something huge and Black and monstery. Yeah. Uh, best described as a gargoyle, as far as I can tell. Yeah, although, I don't know, the, the description of the monster, like, once it was called a gargoyle, I had a better picture of it in my head, because the description wasn't really giving me much, honestly. Yeah, look, uh... This is where we, like, I feel like we spent a lot of work in the opening scenes that we then didn't spend on any of the chapters from here out, here on yeah. out. That's true. Like, we had such a strong opening, and then, like, I don't know if she, did she buy the first chapter from someone else? Or, <laughs> like, yeah. Because from here on in, like, same characters, same name, but, like, writing style seems to differ a bit. Yeah. Well, she sees the guy with the monster, and he... A sparkly hot guy from before. I mean, I think before he comes in, um, the, the, the guy who's being attacked by the gargoyle seems to be surprised that she can see it too. Yeah. Because apparently nobody else so far has been able to. Oh no, actually, he can't see it either. That's what it was. Yeah, so he's been he attacked, attacked by something. something. Which is super fucking creepy. Yeah. Is, doesn't she hit it with some of her fire to start off with? Or no, she uses some of the telekinesis, right? To try and, like, move yeah. it? She's, like, trying to pull it off. <laughs> and again, it's it's her powers are really inconsistent. Because in yeah. the like, opening scene, she uses the telekinesis to trip somebody up and she's like well if I have enough like anger emotion and I concentrate well I can do little things like this and now the fighting scene she in some moments manages to actually get a hold of this huge monster and you're like bitch I thought you could barely hold a shoe like can we be clear what you can't and can't do where's your level at 
No, no, no. That's a plot point later. You haven't. You clearly not list pay, paying attention. I mean, the first book is only so helpful in giving those details. No, nah, because we have to do that weird blood thing later. Yeah, but still, like either you can control your power right now, or you can't, or you can only to a certain point. But this don't... is the triggering event for all of the magical powers coming out. We don't know. She's unlimited. She has Mary Sue syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, mm-hmm. I would have thought one of her abusive foster parents would have been the catalyst, and not a gargoyle in the streets. Yeah, well, I mean, we get uh, flashbacks later that tell us about her, like, killing off pigeons that pooped on her daisy, and then, like, she, one of the, one of the boys of one of her foster homes tried to touch her inappropriately, and she, she turned him, made him icy, and also, like, broke the earth, shifted the earth in somebody's garden when she was angry and um yeah when she gets super angry they are like minor earthquakes but oh no telekinesis i can't do any more than trip him right now until like half an hour later oh and she's angry and scared highly emotional there you go that's what your trigger is yeah maybe oh well at any rate she tries to give it her best go and now we have the man meat coming in man meat <laughs> And he's like, this is my job, you're a civilian, get out of the way. Yeah. Basically. Sit down, shut up, <laughs> and watch me work. Now watch me work. So, work now watch me work. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, and he has like a couple of cool, not emasculating at all rings. Not at all. And also a bunch of crystals. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's, he, Looks like one of these strange new age kids. Yeah. Look at me and my leather duster. I don't know that he's actually wearing a leather duster, but at this point in my imagination he is. Look at me and my leather duster with all my cool rings and my fancy crystal net thing. <laughs> I'm just waiting for him to put out the tarot cards and tell her a future. Nah, he's got a... He's got his, like, impenetrable gaze or something that... Uses to stick her to the spot. Yeah, he's like one of those, oh no, we have to do it by the books, but Protocol 7C says something. It's a, I don't see how that is the hot point here, but apparently that's super hot right now. So sexy. <laughs> he's sticking to the rules. Yay! <laughs> Um, so uh, yes, look, I'm he... not gonna lie. Yes. Big fan of it, that rule stickler. Gets me all hot and bothered. I see. We'll, we'll get you somebody who works, I don't know, maybe at the DMV with like a stamp. No. Continue <laughs> with the story. <laughs> um, yes. So, he's jumping in and it's all professional or whatever about this shit. Um, he can th- throw flames with his rings? Yeah, oh. he's a telekinetic yeah. firebender. But is he telekinetic too, though? Yeah. Okay. Um, yes, so he's using the fire to um, well, to rein in the monster and she attempts to help him with her telekinesis. But she and with yeah, and some kind of, like, firewall where she rubs her hands together and makes, like, a weird, like, burning wall. I don't know, it's described strangely. Truth, it is. But, yes, I don't know, some kind of flaming wall sort of thingy with which she pushes the monster down and that gives him time to put down his uh, cool crystals, which form a net and now the thing is trapped and then it goes into a bottle like a little genie and it's fine it's like a mason jar because he's a real hipster (laughs) yes i mean he has the crystals he needs the mason jars Mm. Uh, i would have loved if he got out a tupperware box it was just like and now we're gonna trap it in here 
It just, it's great because if they ever break, you know, you have lifelong guarantee on this shit. It's great. Yeah. I, I mean, if it was me, I would be using some of the 101 Chinese containers that we have. Oh, yes. Yeah, just having a huge shelf full of empty but washed out ice cream containers with like the faint <laughs> etiquette on it. And you're like, what's that? Oh, it's a monster. I trapped. Yeah. And then I put it in the freezer because th that will slow it down. I mean, I'm like, yeah. You, know, you bust out the label maker and you put a label on it and say, like, what monster it is, where you caught it, and when. Filing systems, guys, they're really cool. <laughs> but then anyway. somebody fucks it up, and now you have a container that says soup, and it's clearly not soup. <laughs> We're already writing a better story. Yes. <laughs> oh, great. Take notes, take notes. Yeah. We'll just listen back to okay. all the episodes and pull all of our storylines together and then finally write probably a children's book. Yes, it's gonna be a real fucked up trilogy, but it'll be great. A trilogy? I'm giving it to one children's book. <laughs> well, if we do all of this crazy shit in one book, I think people are just gonna get brain hemorrhage. I think we need to like well, spare it out. We'll review our own book. They clearly didn't think about it or structure their plot out. They tried to cram too many ideas in one story. <laughs> it, it reads like two people wrote it. <laughs> Which they did. Are we going to split it half and half? So like midway through, people will be like, what is going on? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, yeah, so we, we have him trap the monster and then he's like, Ah, uh, looks like you're one of those uh, undiscovered witches, and she's like, wait, what? And he goes... I've not definitely been dreaming about this for my entire life. <laughs> oh, we didn't mention the note from her dad. Cool. So, this is important, and definitely a thing that we have to worry about three books from now. But, um, she is a foster kid. She got abandoned when she was four, and all she got left was with this note from her dad that says, fuck, let me find it, um, something like, stay safe and stay smart. Yeah. And you're like, all right, cool, I mean, it's, dad. You know, <laughs> it's not a terrible note, I suppose, but what I find really strange is that... All right, all right, all right, I found it. Ready? Yes. Holly, I'm so sorry for doing this to you, but there is no other way. Stay safe, stay smart, I love you, dad. The, uh, only, the note was the only thing my parents had left with me before dropping me off at the orphanage when I was three. I mean, honestly, the first thing that comes to mind when you read a message like that, at least for me, is great. You went into prison for dealing drugs. <laughs> really? My first thought would not be, oh, my dad was a great guy who probably got roped into some things he had no control about. My thought would be, well, oh, he fucked up, didn't he? I don't know how she managed to keep a hold of the note. Yes, and also, I mean, she says that it's faded and stuff through the years, but it's it's the only thing you have of your parents. You don't know if they were even good people, bad people, anything. But you keep that thing on you at all times. Like, she has it in every purse that she ever uses it. She makes sure that she has it with her, no matter where she goes. And I think that's a bit much. Look, I used to keep things in my wallet. My library card is in there from when I was, like, seven. It's holding up, but it was laminated, I must admit. It was laminated. Yes, but did you take care to make sure that you always had it with you? Like, was it important to you? It was in my wallet, and I took my wallet everywhere I went. Yeah, but, I mean, did you put it in your wallet and simply forgot it was in there? Or were you like, yeah. oh, wait, no, 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 I, my... Option A... Yes. And with her, it's not option A. She, like, has it in her purse, and then in another scene, she has it in one of her pockets. She's, like, clearly taking care that she always has it with her. And that's kind of strange, because it's not, it's not like, it's a like long list phone. of to-do things. No, it's basically her phone. She should put it in her phone case. <laughs> Especially because she knows the, like, th three lines of text by heart. You do not need to have the actual copy on your body. Also, this book was written in 2018, so she definitely had a big phone and a big phone case. <laughs> Put it in the phone case. Yes. Or, well, I don't know, get a 
tattooed on your arm like all the other hipsters. She is not a hipster, Wade is a hipster. Nah, true. Well, in any she's case. She's a cool girl. Yes, and she has dramatic, stupid note all the time. And yes, so Wade goes, Yo, which looks like you're like, didn't get discovered like people are usually supposed to. Oopsie, but uh, I'll have to report you in my, I don't know, mission report or whatever. So you're gonna, I'll give, I'll give you 24 hours, but then you have to call me. And we'll set you up with a meeting and get you involved with the community. Yes, it's, I mean, the way he describes the coven, uh, the, the San Diego coven that she kind of needs to belong to because, um, Otherwise, because she's a rich, not safe. It's, yeah. First of all, she managed to survive the 19 years in, like, shitty situations. And secondly, he makes it sound really non-appealing. Like, you have to become part of this strange, which I don't know, society she's... now. Yeah, which is why she's totally justified in being like, no. Uh, no, that's... no, not keen. Um, yeah, I... especially because he mentioned that he, like, swore an oath or something to the coven. And you're like, oh, this sounds like a sect. Uh, no, 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 no. I don't want to hang out in your cult. And I think she does call it a cult as well. Um, yeah, which, I mean, it is. You're swearing weird things and you have to abide by strange laws. Like, no, thank you. So, totally justifiable decision. She walks away and goes home and is like, mm, no. So <laughs> She tosses the card and goes, yeah, I don't think I'm going to call this motherfucker. Then she goes out for coffee and she runs into her foster sister from the most re- from her last family who, like, the family genuinely loved her and took care of her and put her on the straight and narrow and gave her a fancy private school education where the teachers yeah. looked down on her, but they definitely had to give her the same education because that's how that works. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but yes, yeah, so the kind of only people she would consider family, I suppose, the Smiths, because at this point she's called Harley Smith. Yeah, she's got their last name. Um... Yes, so she has the nice coffee session. She's like, oh, feeling all better about herself. And then yeah, I think it's on her way home. She has to ask the crucial question of her sister. Like, if you found out you had superpowers and then you got approached by a magical organization, what would you do? And the sister gives literally some of the best advice to be like, what does their logo look like? Because if it's got spiders or snakes on it, you shouldn't go. <laughs> yeah, You're not wrong. Like- she, she's not asking huge questions, but it makes you think, Holly, why did you not ask those questions? <laughs> like, yeah. what are you people about? Do you ever kill guys? Like, important questions. Do you worship any strange deities? <laughs> yeah, what is the deal with your work and holiday arrangements? Um... <laughs> Especially because later on, when she gets to the place, there are, like, snakes <laughs> on, on the walls and, like, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, like the stonework inside has like snakes on it a oh. lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, we're, oh, not, here we go. we're not there yet. Calm down, calm down. Sorry. Yes, fine. So she's right. on her way home, going by um, some shop's window and sees, I don't know, some fancy expensive leather jacket because she's all about that leather. And uh, things are getting creepy because now all of a sudden Wade's business card is like stuck to the window. And it's not outside of the window, but it's like in the window, inside of the glass. Which, and she turns around and and asks somebody else if they could see that. They're like, no, what are you talking about? She's like, oh, okay, cool. I guess I'm imagining it. Yes, um, being like a creepy lady on the street seeing things. Yeah, and it just kind of ends up everywhere. It's The card is everywhere, and only she can see it. She's like going crazy. Yes, it's on every window that she goes by. It's, it's laying yeah. on the ground, I think, too, at some stage. It's just business cards, creepy business cards. Yeah, and then she goes to work, and literally his name is all she can hear. Anybody opens their mouth, they say his name and, like, call him. Yeah, and clearly they are talk, telling, uh, saying normal things, because you can see it in their expressions, and she's just basically behaving like a maniac. And storms from work, rushing home. I think at some stage she also tries to watch a movie, but then the 
the cast just starts saying his name and his number. Yeah. So she calls him, funnily enough. <laughs> yeah, after her life starts breaking apart. Yeah, because he totally hasn't, like, stalked her and ruined her life. Great start oh. for our love interest. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. <clears throat> so she calls him, and they meet up at, I think, the, like, museum, or? Science museum. Yes. Science Center, Science Museum thing, San Diego. I'm sure if you'd been there, you would know what it was. But yeah, I've never been to San Diego, so. <coughs> no, me neither. Best I know so about yes. it is Madagascar. <laughs> yeah. So, they're meeting at the zoo, clearly. And um, she goes inside. He's there. He takes her to the fucking kids section. Yeah, kitty, kid city. Yes, Uchi. Yes, I mean I love that dialogue with the little kid that comes. Oh up, yeah. That comes up to her because he's he's talking to her and she's like, "Do you know this? Uh, do you know this man?" And she's like, "Well, not really." Ooh, my mom says you shouldn't shouldn't talk to strangers, even if they offer you candy. And she goes, "Well, you didn't candy? offer me candy." And she's like, "Oh my God, you didn't." <laughs> <laughs> but just the right reaction here. You should offer the woman candy. Yes, it's the quickest way to to our hearts. <laughs> yes, sugar and alcohol. But you can't do that in kids' section. <laughs> no, there's a lot of like, oh, right. Uh, she vaguely implies that he's a child abductor, and then... Um... <laughs> yes, great, great setup for our male protagonist here. Yeah. Um, yes, so they go through a secret fancy magic door and are in, in the janitor's closet. <laughs> yes, conspicuous. Um, and now they're in like a, what is it? A, it's not a parallel universe, but it's like a pocket dimension or something? Yes, like a tiny bubble dimension on the outside of a larger soap bubble dimension. You know, like in that Doctor Who episode about a house. Yeah, but less exciting no, a... and badly explained. <laughs> yeah, it's just great that we have this metaphor from a Doctor Who episode that's really quite old. <laughs> and the TARDIS gets a human body. <sighs> Sexy. Um, uh, yes. I love her. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Big fan of that Doctor Who episode. But anyway. Okay, raining it back in. Mm. So, there she is in now that great pocket dimension, whatever fuck. And we have like great architecture, because apparently she also has a thing for architecture, which she learned at the private school. Because she's fancy now dissecting it. School education. Yeah. I'm not gonna yeah, lie, no, she... kind of skipped over the architecture bit. Yeah, I mean at least we, we got a bit of fleshing out of her character in that way. Like we get Yeah the point of, I, oh, okay, she likes architecture, and she knows something about architecture. Yeah. I don't like it's, how much she poo-poos this school, though. This school <laughs> clearly did right by her, and she is just not not a fan. Yeah. Yes. That's not the greatest. But then her character yeah. isn't necessarily the greatest. <laughs> Correct. Um, yes, so... There's, like, a lot of stonework on the inside. I don't know. By the sound of it, I still feel like this could be very culty because it sounds a bit like a temple on the inside for the first, like, opening room or entrance. Yes, it is. See, it's very, like, church-like, I think, from the interior, yeah. right? Yes, and a lot of snakes, which just tells you, mm, bad sign. So many snakes. Um, yes, and he takes her to the leader of the cabin, the manager, the... They do a tour first, and they have to go past the guy who does the combat training, and they go to the dining hall, because those are important yes. things. I mean, not oh. really. And he also does this bullshit thing, and she, he's like, you're late. She's like, I'm entirely on time. He's like, you're three days late. And like, the comeback here is, you literally harassed me into being here. 
Yes. Do you realize your stalker tendencies? Or are we not? Okay, we're not going to talk about that. No, 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 not going to talk about it. Not at all. Not the fact that your clever little bit of magic is really, really kind of invasive. But it's fine because he's the love interest. He's allowed to be stalkery. He's so man meaty. Oh. Um, yes. So, stalker being stalker. And yes, she gets a tour of all the exciting rooms like the, the kitchens and whatever the fuck. I mean... So we get like no, it's not the key. We don't see the kitchen. We we see like the dining hall and the combat room where she encounters the trainer guy who's like, oh, is this a new girl? I want to see what you can do. And she's like, who is this guy? And Wade's like standing between her and this guy having like a macho off, and she can't get a like an empathic emp- empathic read on him. Yeah. And she's like, gotta remember who that guy is. He's clearly got no emotions. Um, yeah. And then we go and see their rooms, like where their living quarters are and like where people are at. And and she's like, why is there so much security here? And he's like, well, we've had some incidences laying the groundwork for the incidences. You've got to protect our homes. And she was like, yeah, if I was an evil dictator who was attacking people, I would definitely burn down people's tents in the middle of the night when all the guards are asleep. Which, look, thoughts that I've had, but, like, in the context of the story, like, it seemed a bit out of place. It was like... It was like her monologue and also, like, third third party perspective, and it was really just, like, kind of mushed in there. But definitely a thought I've had before. <laughs> yes, Felt just the timing dead. of the thought was strange. Yeah, a hundred percent. Anyway, yeah, from there... Really right now. Oh, a hundred percent, like, how to get out of the bubble dimension that's between dimensions and worlds. Mm-hmm. Any... Oh, what about I say I want to leave and they won't let me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, how do we get out of a pocket universe where they've literally established what is matter and what isn't. Uh, okay, so yes, she gets the fancy tour, also oh, exciting, and then she gets to meet the uh, manager, the CEO of the branch. Yeah. Um. Yes. Let me see if I can remember. Alton is his name. Alton Waterhouse. <laughs> yes. And he's got a I southern twang. I just like. They're not the typical fantasy story names, but they're the names that are rarely used. She went for, like, what other names nobody has at the moment. Look, this could just be because, um, it's, like, she's looking for, like, southern gentlemanly names and, like, we're not exposed to what a southern gentleman's name should be. Because, you know, we're not American. So I have no idea what the common names are. It's not a common name here. It's not a common name there. It could well be... Uh, I mean, maybe... I don't know. In any case, we get an introduction of him and he gives her the exposition, basically. About what she is, what the world is, and explains very little that we didn't kind of already know, or, like, infer. Yeah, like, there's no big revelation. It's just a big, fat plot dump. Yes. You know, like, this is a safe haven. All the coven does is protect its people. There aren't too many of us out there, and, you know, people don't take kindly to those who are different. Man has a natural tendency to destroy what he doesn't understand, and unfortunately, it stands true even in the 21st century. For now, I'm not asking you to pledge yourself to the coven. The decision will be yours. All I did was add your name to the assessment log so the coven's magic can allow you to move freely within its limits. Highly sensitive areas of our little pocket in the universe are restricted though yes so basically you're getting the you're getting the door key but you don't get the master key true and then she gives a, a bit of a rundown on like how magic in this universe works they're so they're using chaos theory and so they're big they're big ta- like task metaphor life 
memo. Uh, what is it? What I'm looking for? I don't know. Their motto. There we go. That's the word I'm looking for. It's law out of chaos, but in Latin because they're fancy. Um, yes, I mean they're the cool kids. They speak Latin. Yes, they. You can't speak Latin though. Nobody knows I mean, what the pronunciation can. is. You can only ever read Latin. No, you can speak it. You just don't know if you're pronouncing it correctly, but you can definitely speak it. I mean, you can try, sure. <laughs> you can say the words. You never know if they mean what you want them to mean, but apparently it works, because when they do magic, they just say Latin things. latin Latin-y, latin Latin! Latin! <laughs> um, I just like her to sit in a corner with a like just Latin dictionary or something, and just read out random words, setting things on fire. Well, by that's, the, that's the thing. So they go on to be like, we're cool and we know Latin, and if you say the words in Latin, you can open the door. But the spells are mostly from your, using your e-spirit, which is your focusing item, and could oh, be... I hate the name for it. Cool though. rings, or it could be uh, a wand, or it could be a ring, or it could be cufflinks. Um, <laughs> yes, it tends to be jewelry. And all I could think when we got introduced to the concept was, firstly, the title for it is just Eastbert. really shitty. It sounds stupid as hell. And secondly, what if you had a really big item? What if you had like a, a chunky big box or some shit that you have to drag well, what around? What if it's to like it? a hat? What if it's like a way over the top hat? Like, well, this <laughs> is where I am now, I guess. <laughs> Why are you wearing that sombrero all the time? It's my spirit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I was just waiting for somebody to show up who sees me is just huge and clunky and really unpractical and they have to haul it around the whole time. What if it's a Wait. dish or like, you know, a fork? Like... <laughs> what is that? It's my magical fork. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, I know we go on to like have like magic books later, but like what if it like you got attached to a novel like oh no yeah, Harry Potter diary. is my e spirit like I have to take <laughs> Harry Potter with me everywhere. <laughs> yeah, what if I the whole time I was just rooting for her car Daisy to become her e spirit. <laughs> just that have to drive that in, yeah. <laughs> Take it into all of her. Yeah. Can't do magic. Let me get it to my car first. <laughs> that would have been pretty funny. Anyway, from here, as we get all of this crucial info dump, um, we then go to get her tested for like what magical power she has. So they talk about the fact that Chaos has three children. Four, three children? Which is light, dark, and nighttime. And Earth. So there's four of them. <laughs> yes, and it's just, like, don't ask too many questions. She wrote that down click quickly in lunch break. It's so fine. There, just so there's, like, on. the darkness is, like, the complete dark. The It's the absence of light or anything good. It's the swallower, swallower of worlds, blah, 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 blah. It's, like, full complete darkness and, and nothingness. Light is, like, 100% energy, and darkness is the absence of energy. Then nighttime is cyclic, and like the opposite of nighttime is actually like the moon and the stars. And you're like, I don't understand how I don't know. because the, the next this thing makes that no I, sense. Yeah, basically because we have dark and light, which were like cool, excellent. Those are like yin and yang. We can deal with that, nice and balanced. Then we've got nighttime, which doesn't really have. Oh, we have night, which doesn't really have like a corresponding friend. And then we have the earth. Which Earth is really just divided up into all your normal, like, fire bending, water bending, air bending, shiznies. Yeah. Um, it's. You clearly have a feeling that this part, she didn't put enough time into it. She just went with the general, oh, we'll do the elements and shit, and just kept, kept moving yeah, but, on. But, like, the Chaos's grandchildren are the elements, and we don't talk about, like, Chaos's children or Chaos's, like, other grandchildren. And I feel like there's a lot going on there. And then we get all these powers that don't quite fit in the original category she talks about. And so I get like, 
I get getting a bit worked up about it, but like I like it when my world building is consistent. I'm a big fan of like giving me a story in a well developed world. Yeah, I don't necessarily it just have. Doesn't make sense. Yeah. <laughs> put e enough effort and oh, proper man. planning into the side of things. She just went with the good old "Don't ask questions, it's magic." Well, th we move on so quickly after this, that, and it's never really addressed again until, yeah. like, book seven, I don't know, much later, um, when we have to deal with the direct descendants of chaos. But, like, that's book 12 of nine, um, it, which you clearly yes. didn't get that far. But in the first book, we just, like, don't ask any questions. And we go from this, like, description of chaos down to being tested for our different types of magic. And we get the yes. fact that she Harley... Goes into a, she goes into a lab and meets the scientist woman, whatever, and she makes it clear from the beginning that I'm not a big fan of hospitals or this entire lab setting you have here. This makes me uncomfortable. And then she comes out with not a syringe, but a 17... Hundred syringe that apparently easy, looks yeah. like you could, I don't know, draw not just blood but anything out of her body with yeah. that thing. And she's like, your no. entire blood donation is gonna come out in this one syringe, <laughs> um, basically. And it just sounds, I mean, it does sound terrifying. And she just does. goes, nope, not gonna happen. And here we have my first issue. Uh, okay. That we so need to have with these fucking fantasy and sci-fi books. Consent, okay. you motherfuckers. Consent Sorry. is important, but we had a stalker earlier in this book that becomes a love interest, so, like, let's be reasonable here about what our expectations are. But, like, yes, consent yeah. is a big issue, but my thing is, like, I think that it's, um, the... It's exaggerated, I think, because we're in Harley's perspective, like, the, the giantness of the syringe is just, like her perspective on it, and I don't think it would actually be a ridiculously large syringe. I mean, even if it is, that doesn't really, like, change the fact that clearly she has some kind of phobia of either doctors or hospitals or whatever it is, really. Yeah, well, she doesn't want to get caught up in a lab. She makes that clear. Um, yeah. She has an issue with this situation, and instead of taking, I don't know, an extra five minutes to talk to her rationally and maybe calm her down... We have Wade having the great idea of just going, you know what? I'm just going to physically force you into doing it with telekinesis. Yeah, telekinesis. And this is right after, so everybody is starting to think that she's a big deal, right? Because we've just had all these flashbacks about the different elements that she can use. Well, the answer is all of them because she's super cool and telekinesis and she's an empath. Oh, yes, she hasn't told normally them. people just have like one element and maybe an extra power. Yeah. And um, Wade seems to be, like, super, like, annoyed about her, not a big fan, la 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 la. Anyway, her blood gets taken out in a very unconsenting way where she gets tied to a chair, but not with the ropes that are on the chair. And we don't talk about that either, the fact that there are ropes in this thing called a purge. <laughs> but mm -hmm. that's not a now problem. Um, not to mention that we don't even, like, in the aftermath, she's fine with him having forced her to do it. Be, be, I mean, she basically well, she goes... she doesn't. She's not fine. She, like, marks him out to get revenge later. Yeah, but then when he... I don't know, did he apologize for it? Or did he nope. just mention it? And she was like, don't mention it. It's fine or something. No, uh, not really. The next thing that happens is that... So nobody else seems to know she's, a, she's an empath yet. Right up until they put her blood in a bronze bowl and like swirl it around until it breaks down all these trails and makes all these different marks on the inside of the bowl. It's basically like reading fucking tea leaves. Um, <laughs> yes. And the lady's like, oh, so you're inclined to this and you're inclined to that. Oh, and you're an empath. And then Wade gets like super embarrassed and she gives like a detailed explanation of how he's feeling and why. <laughs> and, um, and yes. he's like super embarrassed and like, Ooh, she can read me, blue, 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 blue. But then they come out with this statement that she's in fact mediocre. Yes, and then which, Wade's like, uh, mediocre doesn't mean she's anything. Like, why give her any kind of hope that she could be anything greater than what she is? She's like, she'll be useless. She'll she'll only ever purge once in her life, and she's not gonna contribute anything to the magic. 
Yeah. So you basically, know. by the fact you already demonstrated huge amounts of power in the stories that she just told, and he saw her like throwing a beast around with that telekinesis. So, yeah, but, but apparently, being mediocre means you can only get a certain amount of control, I guess, of your powers. I thought it was a certain amount of power, like. You can only get to like a certain level of strength. It was less about control. Yes, but I thought it was also like being able to use what you have, like super effective or not. But I don't know. She never does the real good explaining shit. She gives a lot of exposition, but she doesn't say the important things clearly. So my understanding of it was, and I guess this becomes clear because like we have to talk about it that it's not particularly written well, is that with a lot of training, you can execute control over the volume of power that you have, right? And if you're well trained with a small amount of power, you can do a lot. Whereas like, if you just have a lot of power, like I can burn down this whole building in no time at all. But if I have a small amount of power, like create an inferno of fire and burn down the building, or if I've got a small amount of power, and I am strategic and smart about it, if I can, like, generate a fire within the building fibers of the wall, then I can also burn down the building. It just is, like, a longer, more complicated, more delicate process that involves me, like, working hard to build up the power that I have. Yes. So, because she has to go to school, and they're, like, try and teach her all of this control, and it takes forever because they just think she's stupid. <laughs> I mean, also, we don't get a lot of the schooling part that is supposed to happen, but in this book, like, they're like, we, we, you have to go to school every day, and we have to teach you, and then it happens, I think, once in the book. Yeah, then other things happen, and fair. she's very easily distracted. But anyway, at this point, it's less of... She may, may only be a mediocre because of the description, like, of the amount of information they've gotten out of her blood at the moment, but... The blood reading doctor, doctor, not like yes. medium, psychic, the witch whatever, doctor. witch doctor, is like, there seems to be a block. Like, the blood doesn't go any further or do any of the right things, which is like heavily implied that she does actually have more power and there's something going on inside of her and we'll figure I that mean, out. Honestly, we knew that from the beginning because she's a female protagonist. She's, she is she's not going to be like a lower class <laughs> witch. <laughs> Uh, true, true. But I, I do kind of like that she goes like, oh, I did kind of, was kind of getting that like protagonist vibe, like I'm the key part of the story kind of thing. But like I can, I can like settle myself to be mediocre and just like understand how this is. That's a single like line in the middle of the story. You're like, oh, she maybe she's humble. Nah, -uh. she gets worse from here. She is not humble. <laughs> yes, that's true. So, yes, we have the blood reading and everyone's, I mean, even, even CEO guy is, like, really bummed out when the reading is, is happening. It's like, oh, damn it, I thought we get, like, prestige for this coven and somebody super powerful and now I get another mediocre thrown in here. Yeah, but... Uh, he is not, he's better at hiding his emotions than Wade, but she can definitely sense, like, underneath, like, he is definitely portraying, like, oh, look, mediocre is fine, like, we're still going to accept you, and then there's, like, a little bit of disappointment that she's not more than a mediocre, but then underneath there's, like, super curiousness, like, when they're talking about the block in the blood work, that he, she's definitely being, she's reading him being like, he's definitely going to go back and research the fuck out of whatever the block means, because, like, this is not normal. And even the doctor's like, yeah, I'd like to take your measurement again, like, when you've had some training, like, and see how we go, because, like, yeah. something's not right. But then also, they, like, a lot of them, all except for that one lady, put a really big amount of importance on those labels. Yeah. So mediocre. I don't even know what the other levels are. We, all, all we ever hear every second sentence is mediocre. That's true. And it, it does make it a little bit difficult, but I feel like she's just trying to like indicate how much judgment there is. And there is like a classist system even in this society. Yeah. Or I could yeah. be reading a lot into it because she's not put a lot of effort into anything else. Why would she be putting a lot of hidden meaning into this bit? <laughs> um, yes. So she got her reading. We're all slightly bummed out by her not being the super most powerful witch that ever lived, even though we know 
Yes, he's probably gonna shit. Yeah. Um. Yes. And then I think she gets the whole. Well, why don't we do a trial period? Yeah, like let's let's. You can be here for a month. This is from Al- Alton. Al- Alton. Yes. Um, the CEO guy. He's like, well, we'll put you on probation. You can have like a month here, and then after that, you can decide whether or not you like it. Yeah. Um, but then she has to decide because apparently witches aren't allowed to be on their own and not be part of a coven unless some kind of council gave them express permission. But even then they have to be constantly watched because nobody can be trusted with anything, apparently. Basically. It's very invasive, I found. I just thought, "Mm, this, this makes me slightly uncomfortable. Yeah. But yeah, yes, she's like, fine, trial month, sounds good, let's do it. Yeah. And they want to set up, set her up to live at the compound or whatever. And she's like, mm, and I think you. No, I'd rather stay in my house with my car and all the things, like. <laughs> yes, also, I don't just fucking move in with strangers, what's wrong with you? She's not definitely been doing that her whole life up until this point. I mean, to be fair, that's when the government forced her to. Yeah, true. True, I guess. Now she's at the whole, do you want to move in with strangers? Fuck no. Yes. Consent matters! Anyway, um... Yes, yes, it fucking does. Okay. So, she just has to stay at her own place, and they also tell her that she needs to, or supposed to work at the science center... Well, yeah, they're gonna give her a job. Front. Yeah. And she's like, mm, fine, I'll put my job on hold for a month. But that's it. Because she still has that idea that maybe after a month I won't do this fucking shit and I'll just go back to the casino, it's fine. Yeah, she makes bank at the casino. I don't know why she'd be giving up that job. Yeah. I mean, I think I would definitely want to stay at the casino. It sounds like more fun. Yeah. A much nicer job, and I like Malcolm, her boss. Yes, who's like like a second fatherly figure. Yeah, and he keeps trying to set her up with his son. <laughs> I mean, who would maybe be less stalkery and weird than Wade is? So I would uh, like to meet yeah, his son. He's been really nice and really gentlemanly to her, according to that one second throwaway line. Yes, can we please see that son? <laughs> I'd like to have a look at him. I think he might be a better option here. Definitely a, uh, a safer choice, uh, a nicer choice, I don't know. Yes, but well, we don't get to see that. And she, well, she's on her way home trying to, I think, process all of that. Yeah. And that's when shit hits the fan again. Yes. The ship yeah. has hit it, the fan. Yes. So we have, I think, now... Oh, also, while, while we're still in the coven place, um, we do get an introduction to the whole system of the monsters. Like, the monsters get trapped, and then they go into the... What is it? The armory? Uh, I don't think it's called the armory. Um, they go into the treasure but- chest... Yeah, they go into the place that's guarded by that other monster. Yeah, so they, apparently, the monsters are created by a witch or wizard purging Purging. the dark energy that builds up in them. Yeah, because as you use chaos to create, like, good magic, you have to have a bad magic purge. Yes, it's, once again, not explained well enough to make proper sense. But no matter, they, when they purge, it creates monsters, depending on how powerful they are and how much energy has built up, the monsters are like bigger or smaller or different kinds. And they, they catch them and trap them and then somehow they can use them to power their magic. Yeah, I power this tiny bubble universe, right? Yeah, it's, um, 
Who fucking cares? Um, it's a lot of who fucking cares. Sorry, I just pulled yes. up the like Wikipedia page or the wiki page for this. Nobody has bothered to fill it in. That's how much people <laughs> don't give a shit about this story. I had a Google about the book the other day, and like most fantasy or sci-fi series have at least one, even if small, but at least one fandom page. There is yeah. no fandom wiki for any of these books. That's at all. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, it's not that bad. We've definitely read worse with bigger followings, and I don't understand. Yeah, it's yeah, certainly confusing, but... But also, she churned out nine books in a year. <laughs> Who gave her this contract? Sorry. There were only six books in the first year, and then one book last year. Huh. But wait, when did she write the other ones? Because she also has the whole Finch, Merlin... Um, so we have yes we have that the the monster place with all the glass cubicles that hold the monsters and we have one guy that um i don't know what he's not a chimera but he's like um what's the word he's a hodgepodge mix of different creatures yeah so he has like a lion's head i think and some kind of feathery Oh, oh, is he a uh, griffin? Ah, yes, that's the one I was looking for. Um, yes, so currently he's one of the monsters that came out of a purge a really, really, really fucking long time ago. But yes, the out of a very, a, very a powerful wizard. wizard or witch, right? Yes, she, she, yeah, she was like one of the most powerful witches ever, and he's the only one that ever came out to be sentient and like reasonable, well, reasonable well, understanding. Not quite. Like, I feel like there's some debate about that giant snake one that was, like, worshipped as a god for Ooh. a bit. Yeah, true. But it's I mean, he's sentient, it just can't talk. True. So he's the, the only it's one to ever come out. Jerry. <laughs> Why? Yeah. I mean, of course it's called the bestiary. What else okay, would you call I, I was, I was, um, yes, I was hoping for higher expectations with the armory. <laughs> um... So, like, basically, he's the... Yeah. I mean, he's... Yes, he's the only one who ever come out to, like, have some coherent thought and being able to put it into words and be useful to the covens, pretty much. Yeah. And he's now in charge of the bestiary, because he can... I mean, he can't really control the monsters, but he's he can handle them better than the witches and wizards, because he's kind of... Immortal. Like, yeah, that too. Um, anyway. Yes. And now we're we're at her place, and there are, I think, three gargoyles, and one of them is the one from the opening scene, which apparently has escaped once again. And remembers her! Yes, also weird. But also, like, Monsters escaping from the bestiary is something that never happens, so this is like a big deal, especially for the same gargoyle to escape twice. Yeah. So, yeah, we have like a big fight scene in which her apartment gets completely trashed. And we have. Which is very um, upsetting because it's a huge sign of her independence, but it's a convenient plot point to have her move into the building. <laughs> Yes, I mean, it's the first thought I had when when it was made clear of all the damage that's happening at her house. <laughs> Just yeah. going, oh, great, now we can finally move her in. Thank goodness, we had five minutes of her having her that own sausage. It was super convenient. Yes, fucking plot convenience. Um, and then we have another plot convenience, Wade showing up, being the white Just knight in the shining time. Eye. Yes, playing like the hero, just uh, helping her fight the the gargoyles, and I think they are able to catch them all again. Try to catch them. Yeah. yeah, which is like, given how hard it was to catch them like last time, I don't understand. Yeah, but never explained. Um, so we it's have them so fight. easy this time. Yeah. And also the big gargoyle fell on her daisy, and now it's a piece of scrap metal. Yeah. And she quotes. Yes, it's very 
said. So, Daisy's trash. She's super sad. Her apartment is all a mess. And she's just pissed. So, they're going back to the armory. And she gets a room there. It's not the armory. They're going back to the ah, tiny fuck. box universe in the science place. Yes. Uh, mean birds. And well, it's called yes, the uh, beast theory anyway. <laughs> well, they're going back to the coven property, whatever. Um, they're going back to kid zone. That's it now. Um, she gets a room. And... Yes. Goes to sleep. And now we go back into the next stalkery plotline. She wakes her up and her room is like full of clothing for her that fits her perfectly as well as underwear. Yeah, that which is way creepy. Bored her. Yeah. Like, creepy. she knows him for what, two days now? And he bought her underwear. This is yeah. not okay. Just no. Like, to some extent, you know, like, surely this is not his job. His job is, like, to do inspective detective-y stuff, not, like, um, taking care of a young girl who is clearly shit at things. <laughs> I mean, also, you would think that there's somebody in this organization who would take care of the, oh, we have a new member, maybe we need to get them set up with some equipment. Who would do the, yeah. let's get her clothing things. Or, I like, have the they just have a standard weight. store of, like, oh, shit's happened, he'll come to our in-universe in store of clothes and other things. Yeah, or just a place where you have a, like a second-hand collection of clothing in case somebody ever needs some. Right! Ugh. But uh, apparently no, not. No, he went out and bought like fancy, expensive clothing that's all her style. And all the stuff she likes. Slinky underwear. Yes, and very fitting clothes. It's, the whole plot point is just really stupid and ridiculous, but that's where we are. So... She goes to have breakfast, and I think we get an introduction to the other, like, his friends that tend to be in her, um, what is it, like, the detective group, the inspection group, or the... Yeah, team inspection. I mean, yeah, the, the cleanup crew. But, um... Yes, yeah, so we get an introduction to the next uh, no, five background characters, who cares? Um, um, our friend MTM. What? They're her friends, but like, they're just like the stereotypes. She's got a bunch of stereotypes for friends. <laughs> yes, pretty much. But we get a, at least we acknowledge the weirdness of the buying of the clothes, where she just yeah. makes fun of Wade with one of the other girls, just going, you know, he bought me lacy underwear, and it fits perfectly. <laughs> and everybody's like, ooh, but it's perfectly fine, and not like... Mm. Yeah, and nobody goes, wait, what the fuck? You don't just buy a stranger underwear. Like, what the hell, dude? Yeah. So, yes, we're clearly missing a voice of reason in here. All of it a little bit, I think. Yeah. But, oh well. So, she she becomes part of this cleanup crew, and then we also have a couple of minor background characters who are in the uh, inspection group, or detective group, or whatever. So and we get like other hot guy introduced. Because yeah, our, 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 our love triangle, guys. right? Yeah, yes. need a love triangle. Um, yes. Uh, Doesn't he have really it? cool Garrett? hair or something? Yes, Garrett. Yes, oh. he's got the fancy slinky hair. It's not slinky hair. It's just like <laughs> slick back hair. Not I have no idea. Hair. 
I, I uh, don't care. He's he's basically our Malfoy. <laughs> yes, but as if the in the fanfic we actually get to have the Hermione Malfoy romance. <laughs> yes. Oh, she's she's probably just somebody who came out of the fanfiction group. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh well. So yes, they are moving out to do the whole cleanup job of her apartment and the around the the casino and wherever the attacks were because they have to make sure that there aren't any there isn't any camera footage of anything suspicious and they have to talk to people because they can um, they can men and black zap people. It's great. Yeah, is it? I mean, no, it's really like... not convenient, but. Super plot convenient. Um, so yes, they go around, they man and black a couple of people, they go over the footage from the casino, and um, we have a tiny scene where Wade shows off his terrible people skills, trying to get to the footage from the woman who runs the Asian supermarket, I think, or something. Yeah, like across <laughs> the street from the area. Yeah. Um, big surprise, he can't do well with people. I mean, he's a stalker. <laughs> well, yeah, with um, limited skills. Yes. Um, so we get it. They, they do the cleaning up, and then all of a sudden, there's the next gargoyle attack. Dun, dun, um, dun. Big surprise. I think it's, again, like three or four or something. It's like a blue yeah. And they all work together to trap them, and it's great. And she gets like this, I don't know, this feeling of community or whatever. Being part of a team. Woo, look at me go. I'm on yeah. a team. She's on um, a team of the oddballs. But this, like, she ends up being on the cleanup crew first, doesn't she? And that's how they get attacked yeah. again, because they're like out there cleaning up. Yeah, that's what I just said. Off. Sorry, I'm so confused. Oh, um, yes. So we have the attack. We have the cleaning up of that attack, and apparently, there's just. I mean, the, the beast theory at this point sounds like it just has an open door, and the guy who's supposed to watch the beast is just sleeping in a corner. Yeah. So um, we get a we get a visit from the uh, council. The U.S. the state council or the U.S. council they come yeah, visit like what's council. going on? Yeah, and you have to get your shit together. This is dangerous. You've been yes. here for three years and you have nothing to show for it. Yes, there's the weird packing order. Yeah, the if different it's covers her name is and uh, Imogen. Is that the bad woman's name? Imogen. The counselor. Like the super friendly one. Oh, actually, is that the super friendly one? Oh, I just remembered the one of them was Imogen. No, I don't know. At any rate, um, we have the castle coming in and giving giving everybody some shit, and then we um, then we have the side uh, romance triangle plot point of her going out with Garrett in order to get some intel what the inspection team has been like discovering so far. Yeah. They go up to like yes. some really weird bar and sit in a booth, and his like ex girlfriend runs into them or something, doesn't it? Or no, is that when she finds it's it's oh. Wade coming in with just a pretty chick from the coven, being like super weird about it too, like oh you guys are here, and like, he clearly knew that that's where she was going to meet Garrett for that date. Yeah, and it was just. Like the, the the stupidest attempt to throw in a bit of jealousy here. It was yeah. so weirdly set up the entire scene. It, this is, but it's also like terrible because Wade is this like super suave character in literally the opening of the book, and then goes on to be like super sensible, and then he doesn't seem to be able to turn on the charm ever again. Like after the opening where he like flirts with the bar staff. He, like, yeah. never successfully manages it again, despite the fact he's super attractive and the broody type. <laughs> yeah, I, true. I don't... He I just don't. turns out to be a neurotic mess. A stalker. He's a terrible stalker. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that all ends in disaster. 
where he and Garrett seem to have some shared history together and start a fight and she just goes, you know what, fuck both of you, I'm leaving. And goes yeah. home, which is the first sensible decision she's made. And... But yes, yeah. it was just so useless. Like, you were trying to show of her being sensible here and the other boys are being super macho, but, like, that was out of character because she's supposed to be the crazy one and also, like, Wade is the super sensible one. Like, get your stereotypes correct, woman, given yeah. that you keep using them. I mean, next she gets a dream catcher from the, the bestiary manager, manages with that to... Tobe. Or something. P O B. Yes. Um, so she uses the dream catcher, which apparently works like a video recording of her dreams with audio. Yeah. It's great. That, I, yeah. And then she, that makes no sense. <laughs> and then she she watches her dream back, and finally sees her dad, and her aunt, and gets some names, and then she's like, Oh my god, I know. I can find out who I fa- who my family is. Yeah, so she runs to Wade and is like, I have names. And he takes her to the library and they start searching for her dad. Yeah. Which, I mean, I know it's witches and warlocks and all that, but do we really have to go with Merlin? It seems a bit too much on the nose. Yeah, it's, it is really on the nose. But that's this whole series. True. So, yes, they find her dad in a newspaper article in the archives, which basically says... He killed his wife and then was on the run. <laughs> yes. And the par- he no wait. First he cheated on his wife with his sister in law and then he killed his wife to be with her and then he got captured and then was sentenced to death. <laughs> and they never found the child. Yeah. Also, I mean for the fact that she, she she's had this note from him for all this time and she has at no point believed him to be a bad person like in all of her life she always thought he had probably some good reason to give her yeah. up and, and like this note from him has been her anchor and all that and now just so she didn't go fucking... mad in the foster system yeah and now all it takes is a stupid newspaper, One newspaper article, article yeah. of her to go, oh my god, my dad is the worst person in the world, he definitely killed my mom, and the whole time I was just sitting there, bitch, you have no idea what actually happened. Yeah. <laughs> You're just gonna take it all at face value? What's wrong with you? So she immediately is, is on board with the whole idea of, yeah, my dad killed my mom, oh my god, and then he like tried to run away with my aunt. <laughs> Yeah, it's very confusing because that, that's also not the woman who appeared in his dream, right? Because the woman, woman that appeared in her dream was was actually his sister, her aunt, rather than like... Oh, yeah, yeah, no, you're right. Oh, God, rather than like the aunts. woman he he's supposedly in love with. Anyway. It, it's, all of it already reeks of... Too many plot to trick points. You. Yeah. So, we have all that, and she's very bummed out, and then we have Alden showing up to everybody's up late at night, apparently. Yeah. Um, and just goes, mm, well, I had a bit of a feeling about it, and then he he did some research, too, and it turns out that Alton was on the jury that sentenced him to death. <laughs> it just is, mmm... Wait, so you're one of the people who sent my father to death. Yeah, Yeah, but if you believe that he's the bad guy, then you can't make Alton out to be the bad guy. Like, either he's a murderer and he deserved the death penalty, or if not the death penalty, life in prison or something. But, like, you have to pick your bad guy. Yeah, pretty much. Which, no, no picking whatsoever. Um, yeah. So she's really bummed out about that. Uh, the next morning, it turns out that Garrett, at some stage, overheard them talking, plot conveniently, and told the entire Way school. Many people in the library, yeah. Yes. So now there are a couple of kids whose parents were supposedly killed by her father as well, I think. Yeah, and they're mad about it. They want their revenge. 
Yeah, and everybody's like, oh my god, it's a psychopath's daughter. And people start calling her Merlin, because clearly her dad was a Merlin, and it's all very dramatic. And we have a fight, I think, start breaking out, where Wade takes her side and starts beating Garrett up about it, I think. Yeah, it's all very odd, just odd setup in general, and you're like, I don't quite follow what the thing is. And, like, we're supposed to be there to go to school, and we haven't had, like, more than one class. Like, yeah. even Red Queen made, like, three classes. <laughs> True. And the class she also had to stop taking because she needs private lessons because she can't be in a room with children because their emotions are overwhelming. Super overwhelming. Which kind of makes sense. Like, that is a plot point that actually yeah. makes tons of sense to me. Yeah. But then I would think maybe the first thing you want to try is help her control her empath powers so that she has an easier deal being around so many people all the time. Which she clearly Particularly doesn't normally small do. children whose like surges of emotion just destroy everything. Yeah, but no, why, why do anything of that? That makes sense. Huh? Yeah. Um, yes. Then we, uh, do we have the dramatic action scene then, or, or what's the next point? Um, actually, I can't remember. There's not a lot. Yeah, like... I think, I think we do. Like there's the fight right breaking out. And then, all of a sudden, there are, like, monsters swarming in, aren't there? Yeah, no, from wait. everywhere. Wait. No, no, wait. We have, um, we have the cleanup crew try a super fancy spell, and that one actually reveals that one of Garrett's inspection team members was the one who set the beasts free. Oh, yeah, that's right. And he goes, Mwahaha, I'm the bad guy. What's the bad guy all along? Which he kind of Big was surprise, anyway, but... basically Garrett, right? <laughs> no, it's Finch. Oh, Finch. Which we haven't even mentioned yet as a person in this story so far. I mean, he, so far he's only been one of the background characters who she couldn't read and who seemed like a bit off. Odd. <laughs> yeah. He hung out with uh, Garrett, though, right? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's one, of one of Garrett's, Garrett's like, friends. Yeah. Yes, so now we have him going, well, I am, I was a Merlin all along, and we have, like, bad guy exposition, <laughs> which we need. Oh, because there's not a, we, we, well, we kind of do in this story. <laughs> yes, but it's the, it's the sloppy and not well done Bond villain exposition. Yeah, but there are gaps in the stories that need to be filled. Yeah. So basically he goes, well, actually I'm your, what is it, cousin? Or half-brother? or uh, Not half-brother. Cousin then, isn't it? Because it's from her, yeah. He's the son of her aunt that was supposed to... Uh, her mother's sister's son. Yes. So he goes, Mwaha, I'm your cousin, I'm also a Merlin, and I've been here undercover to fulfill my evil, evil plan. Yeah, but that doesn't really make sense either, because, anyway, it's a dad's name. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, he says that his, his mom, who's been, I think, uh, who disappeared, when, yeah. when Harley's dad died, um, he revealed well, he that she's alive and that she's... Harley's mom for. Yeah. Well, now Finch reveals that she's his mom and she's alive, but in hiding, and she's gonna come back and she's gonna... Uh, Take over the, the world. world. Yes. She's gonna bring chaos to rain down on everybody. Dramatic, dramatic plot. So many dramatics. Uh, yes, and so then we have like a semi fight starting to break out, but then wahaha, Finch has been clever and he let out all the beasts apparently. Yeah, from the beast which are swarming. Yes, and we get the, the great tidbit that his e spirit is a lighter. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's one of those weird guys standing in the alley playing with his lighter. Oh, 
Oh man, are we sure she didn't actually write this book in the late 90s and then like... Who knows, maybe that's why she wrote them so quickly. She had the manuscripts lying around for years. Yeah, possibly. But like, she's got so many books out from like 2017 and there are so, so many of them and she like... Nobody has reviewed any of her books. I don't understand. Who knows what's going on there? Not but, clearly not us. <laughs> yes. So now we have the dramatic scene of everybody trying to fight the beasts and capture them. And because there's so many and so strong, they break through the windows, which are now and now they're leaking into the park. Yeah, San which Diego I park. Think makes sense to me because, like, this is your bubble universe. Like, isn't that the whole idea that, like, there's really only one entrance and exit that keeps you safe? Yeah, it just makes, I don't know, nothing makes they sense. Escape. Yes, they escape and people are fighting them, trying to capture them. We have people dying, we have her trying to get Finch. And they have a one-on-one -on -one fight to the point where I think she manages to knock him out. Yeah, she punches him again and again. The third time, my knuckles give out with a sound crack. But it didn't matter. Finch was out, fully unconscious. I dragged him out of the fountain. It was just in time for two of the security magicals to see us. He whistled to two others and ran to take Finch back inside. Yeah, so well, uh, Holly actually achieving something here. Nice. Yeah. Physical violence. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, people, you have to beat up your problems. That's how this works. It's how life works. Yes, I mean, kind of. Um, okay, so... Um, and, and then we, we, we have a convoluted plan to trap all the monsters that are outside now, because... Oh, I it's mean, another weird thing. We have to deal with how many people died. Like, shit tons of people died, there were choppers flying overhead, and, like, <laughs> Garrett's fighting his own gargoyle, and his best friend has just betrayed him, and, like, then she goes down oh, to stop and, like, save Garrett. Yes. Anyway. And, and then sure that Wade is watching, and, like, super jealous. <laughs> I, at least I imagine, I can't remember much more of the story. Yeah, um, we, we, also did it <laughs> we also have that small point where Tobe told her that her aunt, Finch's mom, apparently had a strange connection to the gargoyles. Yeah. And she was able to control them, and that's why they keep coming back to her, because apparently from really far away, they think that Holly is her aunt, which is so stupid. <laughs> why not Finch? Like... <laughs> Yeah, especially if it's about a blood connection, then why does distance matter? It's not like she looks super similar to her aunt, it's that it's a weird blood relative connection sort of thing. And from far away they think this must be her, and then they get closer and they're like, oh no, it's not her, because now her blood smells different. Yeah, <laughs> so such stupid. an issue. Yeah, and like... Does it? She gets like injured in this fight or something. She goes like all Superman on it and is like way OTT in this fight and starts like bringing shit down and protecting people and being super amazing. But like she's freaking out and like collapses the ground and Wade runs over to her and is like, Holly, Holly, <laughs> like what's going on? <laughs> yes, it's very, it's, it's very dramatic fight scene. And then because of this strange connection to the gargoyles they make the plan of her trying to draw in the gargoyles with a magnified voice and in the meantime everybody else is supposed to set up the entrapment uh, like crystals yeah basically they're making <sighs> one big booby trap and she because she's definitely not super powerful at all in any way <laughs> shape or form no no they, they do a really strange um spell to give her megaphone voice and yes the, the, the plan works they trap the gargoyles she I think kind of passes out at some point wakes up in the hospital or in the, the laboratory set up and is just like not feeling too great it's been a couple of days I think and then for, for a nice ending they oh he 
also into a into a wheelchair and they use the elevator that apparently has not been there beforehand as she notes and then they're at a big meeting with the um, the state council and she gives like a very emotional Round speech how Voldemort yes. is back and they have to defeat him <laughs> I mean, wait, is it Catherine Kathleen Shipton? Yes. The Shiptons, but yeah. Need to she get shipped fancy... out. <laughs> she gives the big fancy speech, making sure that that the coven is like portrayed in a good light because she likes... She's good at giving old. round speeches and she's definitely not a Mary Sue at all. No, never. And so the, the super uptight mean guy from the council seems to actually respect her and is like well fine okay you guys get only i don't know minimum punishment or something and we'll keep an eye on this and you can keep the bestiary but we'll have an eye on you and yeah. we're going now and that's the end of book one and if you're interested there are nine more books in this series i think there are even more of them because you have Har- harley merlin and then it's seamlessly goes over into the Finch Merlin series. What? Uh, what? Okay, I'm li- I'm looking her up. Alright. No, oh, but there's something called the gender game that I feel like we need to look into. <laughs> I mean... Gender I... What the... A shade of a vampire. How is she writing so many books? I think there's she wrote... Been- 2017, she figured out how to self-publish or something because, like, there are so many books from that year. I mean, honestly, I think she wrote... I think she's similar to uh, the other author from the other week, um, Nalini... Nalini Singh or something? Yeah, because she also wrote over 200 books within a couple of years, and I think she's around the same... So Harley right. Merlin book 10, uh, Flinch Merlin and the Fount of Youth ebook. Yeah, that's that's when it starts going over into the Finch Merlin series, and that one goes Harley until... Merlin book 11, Finch Merlin and the... What? And the great thing is that the, the then Finch Merlin series goes up till book 14, and then the... Oh no, till book... Hold on, how many of those are out yet? Because the great thing is, there are three or four books that are supposed to come that aren't out yet, but they're all supposed to release only like two months apart from each other. It's ridiculous. Jesus, what is her writing schedule like? I'm impressed about her writing schedule, but like, how is her editor going? (laughs) Apparently, like 10 hours of the day, she just writes. Uh, Take a holiday, woman, and think about your stories. Okay, so, hold on, that book is out, what's the, which one are we missing here? It's just 18, Harley Merlin, 18. That's a lot. Yes. So the last one that came, oh, she released book 16 and book 17 on the same day. Radio? (laughs) This makes no sense. So, Jesus, this woman needs yes. to take a breath. Yeah, so Finch Merlin number 17 came out in April this year. Oh, so wow. that's, that's where we're at. And I, I didn't look that far ahead. I will oh, be careful, everybody, for more spoilers. Yes, yeah, if you actually want to pursue the rest of this series, this is it. Like, leave now. Yeah. Good, good day to you. Um, yes, so I, I didn't I didn't look at the plot very in depth. I just wanted to know what's going on with all the PG ratings uh. here. So I did have a quick skim through like most of the main Harley books, and at some point I think like seven books later or something, she actually finally gets together with Wade. But we still don't oh, get more it takes than a couple so of. Long. Yeah, and we don't get more than a couple of makeout scenes. That's it. It's it's yeah, very... and he's the one that finds her like e spirit. Like yeah, it's it's very very conservative in a way. 
very conservative. Um, which is just like, I don't, your badass is a badass who's 19. Like, let me make it clear based on her lifestyle. She would be tapping that, like. <laughs> yes, definitely. She would be like tapping she, something. The way her character is set up, she's certainly not the type of girl who would go, no, no, we have to wait for marriage or some shit. But clearly this is an American author, so we need yeah. to have some sort of conservatism in here. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. All right, so let's let's wrap this show on the show up. Yes. So after so, all of this, you, I think I'm at a three. Your way. You still yeah, gonna give I'm it at, three? Yeah, I think I'm at three. Not more, but also not less. Like it was still there were a couple of really confusing things, but while I was reading it, it was a good read. Yeah, look, so. it filled the gap in my life when I needed it to, and um. Yeah. Honestly, this would not be the book that I would be recommending to other people, and I'm sorry that I bought it to you. I've got so many other books that I think would be better reads than this one, but I'd say if you need a gap filler, like, this is not hard to bust through in, like, half a day while you're waiting in the airport, which is where I think I read this the first time. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I mean, if if you need any more steamy action, you probably need to look for something else. Yeah, or if you least, want a story like, for adults, this is not it. This is a, like at least a kiss within the first five books. Yeah, if you're a 15 year old who thinks this is what adult life is like, well, probably, I'm gonna say 13, even if you're an innocent 13 year old who thinks that this is what adult life is like, this is the story for you. Yeah. Maybe. Depends on the depends on the thirteen. Depends on the thirteen year old. How innocent you really are. <laughs> oh man. It's just so nice like more complex ideas that you can like handle when you have like um, empathy and like it's just really not fleshed out. Yeah, she could have gone so many ways with that. Yeah. Anyway, well, on that rather sour note. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you for listening. Us rambling on about things not related to the book. Yeah. Once again, complaining Very. about a book. Yeah. Yeah. This is not in my top 10 uh, or even probably top 100. And if I never think about this book again, it will be too soon. Well, yes. On, on that even better note, <laughs> uh, thanks everybody. Who listened in once again? Um, do follow us under T Read Lightly on Instagram, on Facebook, um, very excitingly, also on Spotify, on Woo! podcasts, um, uh, all the platforms, Stitcher yeah. as well. And review us where you can, um, give us a rating, let us know, send us an email. You can email us at tweedlightlypod at gmail.com. You can leave a comment on our YouTube videos, I will probably read it. Um, let us know which book you want us to do next if you yeah. have any ideas yeah if you head over to our website at tweedlightlypod.com you can let us know if there's a book that you think that we should read or if you think that we are too harsh in our reviews <laughs> <laughs> or if you just want to tell us what the fuck you're thinking Yeah. if you think we were too nice to any of these authors let us know too love to know that there are people more pessimistic out there um, oh yes definitely yeah. Alrighty, well, so hopefully we'll hear from you next week. Yes, when we're going to have a look at the selection series. Yeah. Because we clearly needed more teen romance drama in our life. Well, they're about to make the TV show. Netflix is just about to make the TV show. So we need everybody to be up to date on more terrible teen fiction romance yes. stuff. So... We'll see you next week for a probably really long episode of us complaining about teenage gonna, love. Yeah, because we're going to do the whole series, or <clears throat> at least the first three books. Because the first one doesn't have enough content in it. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, well, All right. until next Sunday, guys. Yeah. See you later.